Hello Divination and welcome. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to create 3D motion scroll effects in Divi. This is the final result we're aiming to achieve. So without wasting a lot of time, let's dive in and let's get started. All right, so the first thing we need to do is to create a brand new page. So I'm going to come over here and click on brand new. Next, I'm going to give this page a name. So I'm just going to call it perspective and use Divi Builder. Now for this design, we're going to build everything from scratch, but you can also use the same technique on an existing page. So I'm going to go ahead now and click on start building. And we're going to go with a single column here. So I'm going to go ahead and select this. Now with that selected, the next step now is to go into my section settings. So I'm going to close this, click here on this gear icon. And here we need to add a top padding. So I'm going to click here on design spacing and we're going to add a padding of 40 vh now this is because we want to give this enough space for us to see the scroll effect okay so now that we have this all set we're going to save this by clicking here on this check mark then the next part here is to go into our row settings so i'm going to click here on this gear icon now i'm in my row settings the next step now is to add a bit of css code so i'm going to click here on the advanced custom CSS and I'm going to paste my CSS code in here. So this just adds my perspective. And by the way, if you want to use the exact same code as I'm using throughout this tutorial, I will leave a link to the post in the show notes below. All right. So now that we've added our perspective, I'm going to save this. And then it's time now to add our text module. So I'm going to click here on this plus button and search for my text module. There we go. So I'm going to select it. And all I have to do here is to add my heading text and it's just going to be a recent work. Now I'm going to make this a heading one. So I'm going to highlight it, click here on this drop down and set this to heading one. Okay. So now that we have heading one all set, we need now to stylize it and make it look beautiful. So I'm going to come over here now to the design tab, click on heading text and uh, make sure you're on the H1 tab because this is where heading one is. Okay. So now I'm going to search for my font and my font here is called a railway. So I'm going to search for it and here it is. I'm going to select that next. We really want this to be nice and bold. So I'm going to change my font weight to bold. I'm going to make this centered as well. And now I need to set my size. So I'm going to scroll down a little bit further and add my size as 6VW. Okay. So pretty much I am happy with that. I am going to now save. So next I'm going to add an image. So I'm going to click here on this plus button, search for my image module. And here it is. Now it's time to upload our image. So I have an image that I've already uploaded to my media library. So let me just go ahead and search for it. And here it is. Now, before I continue, I'd like to remind you that in this tutorial, I'm going to be using the dimensions of 880 by 1265 pixels. So make sure you have a similar size for you to get the exact or similar results. Okay. So now that I've selected my image here, I'm going to click upload and here is my image. All right. So now we need to further customize this by coming over here to design. And the first thing we need to do is to align it to the center. Next, we need to set our height. So I'm going to come over here to sizing and our height here has to be 600 pixels. So I'm going to go ahead and manually add it in here at 600 pixels. Next, we're going to add a box shadow. So I'm going to come over here and the style we're going to go with is this one right here. So I'm going to select that. So here for the box vertical position, I'm going to set this to zero and the box shadow blur strength is going to be 60 pixels. So I'm going to go ahead and add it in here. And then finally, we need to add our color. So I'm going to click here on this eyedropper tool. So the color I'm going to add is going to be between these brackets here. So I'm going to paste it like that. And pretty much uh, we've added all the information that we need for our image. All right. So the next part is to go to our column. So to quickly do this, I'm just going to click here on these three little dots, which is uh, the expand settings. I'm going to click the layers and I'm just going to expand this so that I can see all my rows and images. So what we need to do here is go into the column settings. So I'm just going to click here on this gear icon here to go into my column settings. Now that I'm in my column settings, I'm going to come over here to design transform and we need to choose this one here transform origin okay so go ahead and select that and make sure this is right there in the middle okay next we need to uh, come over here to transform rotate so i'm going to go ahead and select that and i'm going to set this to a 30 degrees all right so now that i've added this i'm going to save and save one more time the next step now is to go into my text module. So I'm just going to expand this as well and go into my text by clicking here on this gear icon. It's much easier this way when you use the layers. All right. So now that we're here, what we're going to do next is to come over here to advanced and then you want to click on scroll effects. 
So the first effect we're going to use is the vertical motion. So I'm going to go ahead and select that and enable it. It's very important that you enable it because this is how we are going to add all our settings. Next, I'm going to come over here and start adding all my settings. So I'm going to start off here with minus four and here in the middle, it needs to be zero. And finally over here, it needs to be four. Okay. So now with that set, that's looking okay. And over here on the viewport bottom and top, everything needs to be left the way it is. Okay. So moving on, the next step now is to come over over here to scaling up and down so i'm going to go ahead and select it make sure you activate it and uh, we're going to start off here with our starting scale at 100 percent and in the middle here it needs to be at 100 percent and then finally we need to set this to 50 percent so pretty much that's what we need to do here for our text scroll effects so now I am going to save this. Next, we need to go into the image settings because we also need to add our image scroll effects. Right. So to again, we need to head over here to advanced scroll effects. And we also need to start here with the vertical motion, activate it. And now we can add all our settings. So first of all, I'm going to drag this all the way down here to zero. And then I'm just going to add zero here as my starting offset and the middle, it needs to be zero. And then over here, it needs to be minus 6.5. Okay. So now that I have that all set, the next step is to add our scaling up and down as well. So I'm going to click here and activate it. Next, we're just going to add our starting scale, which needs to be at 130 degrees. Uh, in the middle here, it's found at 100. And then finally, this needs to be 50%. So pretty much that's all we need to do. Let's save this and let's do a quick preview and see what this looks like. So I'm just going to close this. Okay, so pretty much that's our final design. We'll do a preview once we've uh, designed all the three designs. Okay, so moving on, let's head over to part two where we're adding 3D uh, rotation and motion to images in their columns. So I'm going to click here on this plus button here. So we're going to add a regular section and this time we're going to go with two equal columns. And before we start anything here, we need to go into our row settings by clicking here on this gear icon. Now here in the row settings, what we need to do is to add a top margin of 200 pixels. So let's go ahead and do that. We just, uh, the reason why we're doing this is because we just want to give this design a bit of breathing space. So over here, we're going to click on design spacing and uh, we need to go to our bottom margin here set our 200 pixels and then on the padding we need to set this to zero and we're going to activate this chain so this these two values are the same all right so with that set now the next step is to give this row a box shadow so i'm going to come over here to box shadow choose my shadow style so here i'm going to start with my box shadow vertical position and i'm going to set this to 40 pixels and then the blur strength is going to be 50. And here my box shadow spread strength is fine at minus six pixels. The final thing we need to do now is to add our color. And this color has a lot of transparency. So let's click here on this eyedropper tool and just replace the color that we have here between the brackets like that. So you can see here, it's gone just a bit lighter. All right, so with that set, so with that set, I need to come over here to the advanced tab, custom CSS and add this CSS code. So this is just the um, perspective, right? So now that I have this perspective all set, the next step now is to go to column one settings. So I'm gonna save this. And then I'm also going to use my layers. So I'm gonna select my layers here and go to my row. So I'm going to start with my first column. So I'm going to click here on this gear icon. So now that I'm in my column settings, what I'm going to start off with is by uh, adding a gradient. So I'm going to come over here to background, click on the second tab, and let's start by adding our first color. So our first color here is going to have some transparency. So I'm just going to click here and then drag the second slider down because this now gives us our options for RGBA. So I'm just going to highlight this and paste my values in here. And then next, I'm going to add my second color. So I'm going to click here and paste my color in place, add my gradient direction, which is going to be 35 degrees. And with that set, I'm going to come over here to design spacing, and I'm going to add a padding of 5%, both to the top and also to the bottom. 
Now, before I proceed, I'd like to remind you that if you want to use the exact same colors as I'm using throughout this tutorial, I will leave a link to the post in the show notes below. All right. So with that said, the next step now is to add our transform. So let's go ahead and do that by coming all the way down here to transform. And what we need here is transform rotate. So I'm going to select it and I'm also going to set my settings here to 30 degrees on the X axis. And then next, I'm going to come over here to advanced scroll effects. So here on scroll effects, we need to um, stylize this, but this time we're going to go with horizontal motion. So now that I have horizontal motion selected, I need to activate it. Okay. So now that it's activated, we are going to split this middle part here to 60 and bring it all the way down here to 40. Okay. So make sure it's 60 and 40. So now that I have this all set, pretty much I'm good to go. So I'm going to go ahead now and save, save one more time. So now in column one, we need to add an image. So I'm going to click here on this plus button, search for my image module and select it. Next, I'm going to add that image that I used in the first example. So I'm going to click here, select my image and note it's 880 by 1265 pixels. So now I'm going to click upload an image and pretty much this is what it looks like. Now let's head over here to the design tab and here on the design tab, we need to go to alignment and make sure it's centered. And then we're going to come over here to spacing. So here on spacing, we are going to add our margin and it's going to be minus 20 pixels to the top. So let's go ahead and do that. And we also need to add minus 20 to the bottom. Next, we need to add our box shadow. So the style we're going to go with is the first one here. And then the box shadow horizontal position needs to be at 40 pixels or minus 40. And then the blur strength, uh, we're going to set this at zero pixels and the box shadow blur strength. Actually, you know what? This is what needs to be zero. The box shadow vertical position needs to be set to zero. And then the blur strength needs to be at 40 pixels. All right. So now that we have this all set, the final step now is to add our box shadow color. So let's go ahead and do that by coming all the way down here, clicking on this eyedropper tool and pasting our value like that. So that's looking good. Now it's time to add our image scroll effects. Okay. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to click here on advanced scroll effects and let's start here with our vertical motion so i'm going to make sure it's selected and then activate it next we're going to split this into two so we need to again we need again to set this to 60 and here we need to set it to about 40 and then four and minus four is fine with a mid offset of zero so pretty much that's looking good next we need to uh move on to the next motion effect which is the horizontal motion activated set this to minus four and four. Okay. And now we just need to split this into two. So you need to set this to 60 and bring this down to about 40% and then save. Okay. So you can pretty much see the effect there as I'm scrolling and that's looking really, really nice. Okay. Right. So now that we have this all set, we need to now work on the right column. All right. So on the right column, uh, all we have to do is to click here on this plus button and search for our text module and select it. So I'm just going to add some dummy text in here. And the first part here is going to be our header or our heading. Okay. So I'm going to highlight it and set this to heading two like that. I'm just going to close my layers here. So it's out of the way. Okay. So now that is uh, my layers is out of the way. I'm going to come over here now to design text and we are going to set this to poppins. Next, let's set our text color. So I'm going to come over here and this is going to have some transparency. So I'm going to drag the slider down and paste my value between the brackets like that. So that's going to be our color. Our text size is going to be 16. So I'm just going to nudge this a little bit until I get to about 16. And then our line height is going to be 1.9. That just makes it much easier to read. And then next, I'm going to add a margin to the bottom. So I'm going to come over here to spacing and margin bottom is going to be 30 pixels. Now let's work on the heading. So I'm going to click here on this little brush tool. So this is going to take us to our heading settings. So you can see here it's just set to default. So let's use our font, which we used earlier on, and it's called Railway. Our font weight is going to be bold and our text size is going to be 48 pixels. So it's going to be nice and big. And then for our line height, it's going to be 1.5. This is just that it has enough space, so it makes it easier to read. So pretty much I'm happy with that. I'm going to save this. And next, I'm going to add a button to this for our call to action. So I'm going to search for my button module and select it. 
All right, so now that I've selected my button, you can choose whatever text you want to be on this button, but don't forget you need to come over here and add your URL. So for now, I'm gonna add a blank link. So with that all set now, the next step is to stylize this button by coming over here to design button and make sure you activate use custom styles for button. All right, so now that I've uh, selected that, the next step now is to add my background color. So I'm gonna add it by just pasting it in here. Now you can see that this has carried over our border, which we don't need. So we're gonna set this to zero just to make the button look much better. So the button text here needs to be set to white so we can easily read the text on this button. So now that we have this now, we are going to set our font weight and we are going to uh, come over here, set it to bold, and we're also going to make it all caps. Now, just for consistency sake, I'm also going to set this to poppins. So now we have our button styled and looking good. So it's time now to save. And we're also going to go into our column two settings. So I'm gonna click here on this little icon to go into our layers. And I'm gonna expand my row here and go into my column two settings. So here in column two settings, we just need to add a bit of padding. So I'm gonna come over here to design, spacing, and we are going to set this to 40 pixels. And this is going to be all around. So this just gives us some breathing space and makes it look much, much nicer. All right, so I'm just gonna get this out of the way. I save this one more time. And here is our second column. And as you see the scroll happening, you can see that our animation is happening there, which is great. All right, so now let's move on to our third design. So to do that, we just need to go back over here to our layers. I'm gonna open this. And with that open now, to save us a lot of time, I'm just gonna duplicate this row. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. So now that I've duplicated the row, I'm going to expand this and just reverse our columns. So the top one here is going to come to the bottom. So basically what, is this, what this is going to look like is just a reflection of what we have on the top one. So let's see if that's the case. Okay, so let's do it one more time. So I'm going to drag this down and there we go. So now this is on the right and this information here is on the left. So next we need to go into column two, transformation settings. So I'm going to click here on this gear icon, design, transform, so this time we need to go to transform rotate and this needs to be minus 30 degrees because it's facing the other way. So we want it to face uh, the, the right way. So I'm just gonna add minus 30 degrees there. And pretty much that's our final design. So I'm gonna go ahead now and save, save one more time and let's do a quick preview. All right, so this is our final design. You can see here our perspective is working and this is our second uh, row. And then the one that we flipped there we go. So there you have it. Thank you all for watching. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and do follow us on our social media platforms. By doing so, you'll be notified every time we release new tutorials. Until next time, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.